no follow up for that. <laughs> hmm. Our next question, Ms. Koa Gibson. I think this is a great question for you, um, considering that you're a young person. I feel that you're definitely relatable. So. A lack of self-esteem can be the result of one or more factors, such as not feeling attractive, something that we just talked about as a young person, not, being, not feeling smart, unaccomplished, not being accepted, disabilities, traumas, etc. There are multiple things that can cause us to have self-esteem issues or lack of confidence in ourselves. Have you ever struggled to love yourself or the skin you were in? Yes. Um, honestly, about five years ago, that's when I started loving me. Um, from a teenager, I was attractive, but that affected me because you got attention that you didn't want. And people would look at you and say, okay, she is overdeveloped, so she fast. Right. And the reality of it was I wasn't. I just was overdeveloped. And it brought on some unwanted attention. And I dealt with it um, because at, this, at, um, at that time, I didn't know what else to do. So I just dealt with it, and I kept everything in. So about five years ago, I decided to go to therapy. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to get, you have to have a, your mind right before you can show it on the outside. Right. So I started going to therapy, and I started letting a lot of stuff out um, about myself that I was holding in and about just as a childhood how you just go through so many little things and you feel like it don't affect you. Like my grandma raised me and my mom came along when I was um, eight years old. So the transition was not a smooth transition for me because I only knew my grandma at the time. Even though my mom would come in and out, I was really stuck on my grandma. So it was like, at that moment, I went into a shell. So I felt like I couldn't talk to nobody. I really didn't trust people because I felt like my grandma walked away. So, okay, that was another problem because I didn't trust people and I just didn't express myself. And I didn't know how to express myself because I was a kid. And I wouldn't allow people win. So I put up an angry shell so that people could not see the real hurt or see the low self-esteem so people will assume okay she has high self-esteem because of the way she presents herself but inside I was dying you said some profound things and I want to hit on what she said because we're talking about self-esteem and when you think about self-esteem you think of it as someone who is as you said, maybe feeling unattractive or maybe this, but she said she was attractive and it has still affected her. And as she said that it brought back some memories for myself that I didn't even realize was going on with me at the time. Um, and she said the right thing. Cause I remember as she said, being, you know, fairly developed at a young age from middle school. And I remember having hips, thighs, just like she said, and walking home and getting the unwanted attention and how uncomfortable it made me feel to the point that when I got in high school, I would wear big baggy clothes to be, I didn't want to be seen. Yeah. So parents, look at your children. Although they may not be talking to you, it's important to pay attention you may not be able to get them to speak to you, but maybe you want to surround them with somebody who they will speak to. Um, if they won't speak to you, one of the things my mother gave me when I was in middle school, I selectively stopped talking. And because I was going through my own thing and I didn't trust anybody, as she said. And I remember I would just cry, not realizing the enemy was trying to take me and put me in a spirit of depression. And I remember they took me to the counselor office and they called my mom. And the one thing my mom gave me as she sat there in the office, because she told them, she said, I don't know what's wrong with her. She won't talk to me. And that's a, that's a, a hard place to be in as a parent. And I didn't realize it at that time, but now being a parent myself, I cannot imagine my daughter going through something and she won't speak to me. So my mom sat there and she told me in the counselor's office, right in front of the counselor, she said, if you can't trust anybody else to talk to, 
you can talk to God. You can tell him all about it, and he will not tell your secret to nobody. And she didn't realize she freed me that day. I went home, and I told God all about it. And the spirit of depression had no choice but to leave. So if you can't give your children anything else, give them God. Because we don't know what they're going through. This doesn't just apply to children. It applies to young adults. Because sometimes we don't have the words for what we're going through. We just know it hurt. And you're asking us what to, you know, what's going on. But we don't know how to tell you. We can't explain it to you. We just know we hurt and we're alone and the enemy has some way somehow put us in a closet where we're alone so I, I think that is beautiful I thank you for your transparency I thank you for being vulnerable because I can see even as just you know saying that how it, it took a lot to hold back tears um, from what you was doing because like you said you didn't know how to tell you became angry so you, your parents may have thought you were acting out, being disobedient, doing different things, and not realizing you were hurting. Parents, sometimes children are acting out because they're hurting, not because they just want to make your life hard. So consider that as well. Prayer is the number one thing if you can't get through to your child. Even as an adult, if you can't get through them, pray. What would be your advice to a young lady or a young man? My advice would be to... Love yourself. Um, it, like my shirt say, move forward. And I put that because it was so hard for me to move forward. Because I had started seeing myself the way the men seen me or the way people seen me. And I let that affect my growth. So now that I'm 36, I, I start doing things that I should have did in my 20s. Or I should have did when I was 18. Because I let the hurt hide who I was. But I'm grateful today because I sought, I sought out help and I became a better person from all of that. So I would say love yourself and see yourself the way God sees you. Had I seen myself the way God seen me or even the way Aunt Pat seen me because she fought with me. Like she used to be there. Me and her used to be going head to head. Because I wanted to be me, and I didn't know who I was. So she couldn't understand that. Like you said, the baggy pants and the big clothes, that's what I wanted to do because that's just what I wanted to do. And Aunt Pat was like, nope, you're going to wear this dress, and you're going to wear this skirt, and you're going to look like a lady. But had she not put the effort in, had she not stopped and seen, okay, I'm going to love her through the pain, most people would have gave up because I'm not her biological child. So most people would have gave up, but she didn't. She fought with me. She was like, you know what? We're going to have this fight. And she went head to head with me. And even until now, like, when I don't agree with something, she'd be like, well, this is my opinion, and I think you should do it this way. And, and I listened because had I not listened, or had I listened a long time ago, I would have been on a better path. Because she was trying to stir me in the right direction. I just was fighting against her because I was angry. And I didn't know how to express it. And I didn't know how to say, I see, I'm just angry. So I just act out. So I would say, be transparent with yourself. Be open with yourself. And I know as hard as teenagers, we, we have a hard time. But just love you. You have to know who you are as an individual. And, you know, today I can say I know who I am. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. I think we're going to need some tissue up here. Yes. Because I'm trying to hold back tears myself. Um, I want to point out something that she also mentioned. That is often frowned upon in our community. Um, and it's not something openly accepted in our community as a race of black people. And that is, she went to therapy. Because you decide to go and get help and talk to someone about what you're going through that does not mean that you have psychological issues or something's wrong with you. It's just you need to talk. In some cases, some people need to go on medication, but that's not the case for everyone. Um, nothing is wrong with going to therapy. God is all about healing. And if God revealed the issue for you and he has put people in the place to help you move forward, then move forward. 
long as that person is directing you in the right place and not trying to manipulate your mind, move forward with it. Get the help that you need so that you can be whole and be a testimony as, um, I say Kitty, as Koa is today to help someone else. I often tell, I often tell people, you, your deliverance is dependent on other people's deliverance. Everyone has a group of people that they carry in their bellies. So you being delivered is contingent upon the people that you hold and God has assigned to you being delivered. So get your healing, become whole. Okay, brother-in-law, Torrance. Okay. This question can be a little hard. And I'm asking it from a male perspective because I'm asking it from a male perspective and I'm asking it from a female perspective, okay? There is a thin line between self-esteem, self-care, and self-love. Some people have a lack of self-esteem because they lack self-care. For example, a young lady or man who doesn't fix up or take pride in his or her appearance. How would you encourage them to exercise self-care and love without making them feel you don't love them for who they are? Or without making them feel they're losing who they are and trying to fit in with the crowd? Well, I took a few notes here for myself. Um, I choose, I chose the word exceptional, and that's simply because the word says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And that's super important because when you look in the mirror, how do you see yourself? However you see yourself, that's what will come out. So if you look in the mirror and say, I'm exceptional. You begin to invest. First of all, you speak it out of your mouth. I'm exceptional. Then you start to believe it here. Then you start to act on it. You start to do things. You fix yourself up. You start to dress better. And you have to first invest into yourself before anybody else can see that you are exceptional. You're handsome. You're beautiful. You know, you don't have to actually be that beautiful to be beautiful. Beautiful com Beauty comes from within first. That right, right. And I've seen people who are extremely beautiful, but because the inner person is not beautiful, they become ugly. So it's super important for you to invest mentally, emotionally, and physically into yourself. And as the shirt say, move forward. I love it. That was great, bro. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So where we at now? Marshall, follow up. <laughs> I know. Okay. What I will advise young people is to get a friend, a close friend that you can confide in. And you watch them, how they're doing things. And you would catch on. You don't have to come out with a bang, but you do it gradually. Okay, if I want some lashes, I'm going to keep it gradually. I'm not going to say boof. So that's what you would do in this time, in this season. Also, your dress code. It doesn't cost much to be beautiful. I could go and hook up a dress and they'll think I bought it out of Macy's or somewhere. So you have to put your things together, your colors. You have to coordinate. You have to know how to coordinate. When I go to work, they be like, Miss Marshall, you just wore that? I say, no, I've been at this. You just don't realize that these are the same pants, but I just dress it up with a different shirt. Throw on some accessories, get me a head, head scarf, and boom, there it is. So every time I go to work in the morning, I will see the people sitting in the front of the building. As soon as I get out the car, they be like, oh, I Kalinda. Oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> mm. But they don't know. This doesn't come, this didn't come from Macy's or JC Penney's. It came, could have came from Ross. It could have came from the thrift store. But you have to know how to put your pieces together. And no, I'm not the same as I was when I was a teenager. 
I have gotten some, some weight on me now. I don't have that low self-esteem like I used to have before. And a lot of times people may want to come up and ask me, well, Marsha, what happened to you? But if you come up to me the right way, I'll tell you. Don't come up to me jacked up because I'm not going to say nothing to you. I might probably read you. But if you come up to me the right way, I'll tell you what happened. I'll say, girl, let's go get some tea or whatever you like, and I'll tell you the rundown, how I am. I always say this here. Don't go ask my neighbor nothing about Marsha. Come ask Marsha. Because Marsha like going to keep it real with you. And that's the way it is. That's I it. Like that's that. it. I love that right there. Yeah. But I, I want to take this a little step further. So what happens if you don't know how to dress? What happens if you lack that esteem to go and make friends? Because you have some people, that are islands unto themselves when God tells us not to be that. But they just may not know. So what do we do then? Okay. Go back to the mirror. Look at yourself and say, guess what? I could do this. I'm going to start there. I could do this. I may actually interject on that question. Go ahead. I, I, I'm actually the host, but I'm going to play the co-host right now, okay? You're the host. <laughs> you're doing you're such the host. A great you're job. the host. I'm, I'm just you, co-hosting. You, you're doing co-hosting. such a great job. No, you, you're the host. I'm just, I'm just the co-host. <laughs> but I want to touch on that question because that question is near and dear to my heart because I am that person. Um, as many of you know, well, not many, my husband know. Um, and as the panel know, because um, I did discuss it with them briefly, growing up, I wasn't necessarily the black sheep of the family, as in treatment, but I was the black sheep of the family in color. And so I got picked on. I tell people a lot of times self-esteem issues start at home. It don't start in the public. It be your family picking on you first. And that was my case. I can tell y'all all the names, but I ain't going to tell y'all the names that they call me because we're we not going to go there. Um, but it did create a lot of self-esteem issues for me. So being dark was not something that I readily accepted. I can tell you there was times even as a child, eight years old, praying to be lighter. Wanting to be light like my mom because she, she a bright light, y'all. Um, and wanted to be bright like my sister because I felt like being light skin meant that you were pretty. And I didn't know any better. And as we talked about not knowing how to express that as a child, how do you tell your parent that I don't feel pretty? My mama, I used to tell my mama that, and she would tell me, black of the berry, sweet of the juice. That did nothing for me, y'all. It did nothing. I still went to school and got picked on. The other girls were prettier. So subsequently, I was just a tomboy by nature. Like, I played football, I did all that other stuff, and my grandmother would tell me, it's time for you to come in and start acting like you don't I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that. And I was just naturally a tomboy. So what other young ladies, as I grew up, what other young ladies were into, I was not. When, you know, being 11 and 12 and 13 and wanting to pick up makeup and do all that stuff, I was not interested. I wanted to go play football. I wanted to go play basketball. We was going to wrestle. We was going to fight. I was not interested in any of it, despite the fact my grandmother tried to. You know, my mother would tell me. Well, my mom, she kind of backed up because with my sister, she did the same thing. And my sister definitely became, you know, walked in her femininity. And she, she walked in it very early. And my mom's like, yeah, no, I'm going to give Cariel a chance just to outgrow it. However, it took me a while to outgrow it. By the time I was in my 20s, I was still, I was not even carrying a purse. I did not care to carry a purse. I didn't pick up my first purse till I was 23 years old. And I wasn't dressing butchy or anything or boyish. I still dress, you know, feminine like a girl, but I didn't do the makeup and different things and things that men would consider feminine or my, my peers would consider feminine. I didn't even arch my eyebrows to senior year, y'all. I was walking around here bushy, like I didn't. I just didn't care. I learned at that point because I was picked on from a young age to, as she said, love the skin I was in to the point that I loved it to the point that I would let no one tell me how to change because I had already went through the hurt of changing and having to love being dark and doing all that stuff. So y'all not for to undo me and then tell me I gotta become something else. That, that's just too much. That's how I felt about it. Fast forward, I met this young man over here. 
Y'all, I went into the she battle. Said that's what changed you. <laughs> I went into the battle of my life, okay? Long story short, I got saved at 19, and I was in what we call tradition, so it worked out for me, you know? They, you don't wear makeup. Women don't wear makeup. They don't do that. They don't wear, it worked out for me because I ain't do it anyway, so it was okay. Met my husband, and he was just like, mm-mm. And I looked at him. I was like, well, why did you marry me when you knew that I didn't do this? Like, when you met me, I was barefaced. When you met me, I wasn't trying to be the baddest chick on the block. I, I did what I did for myself. And he's like, but now you marry. I was like, but you met me like this. So change became hard. Sure enough. It became very, very hard because now my husband, in a sense, what it translates to me is you're not beautiful. So now I went through self-esteem issues as a child, but now as an adult and married, I'm dealing with self-esteem issues again. And I did not know how to translate that to him. Because when I would tell him to him, it's like, I'm not saying that. I'm just, I just wanted to be better. And tell the people, like, no, Carol, he just wants you to be, he want to be proud of what he have. And I'm like, but he married me this way. <laughs> and that's all I could think of. So with prayer, because no one else could really tell me what to do. It's, it, I, I heard them, but I didn't hear them. With prayer, I had to go to God and ask him to help me in that area. Because... I didn't want to wear makeup. I loved the skin I was in. And I didn't understand why he wanted me to put it put it on. I'm like, everybody say I'm pretty. And if I'm pretty, why you want me to put on makeup? I don't want the makeup. I don't want the lipstick. Y'all, I still struggle with it to this day. I ain't, I'm being honest with you. I still struggle with it. But because I love my husband and because I want a healthy marriage, Marriage comes with compromise, and I know we're not talking about marriage, but part of it was compromise. And I, if I'm going to do it, I was going to do it for him. So I went on YouTube University. That's right, YouTube University, baby. I got my first face done at Mac. And y'all, when I tell you I was uncomfortable, he was loving it, but I was uncomfortable. We went and we sat down at dinner, and he was just like, you look so beautiful. And in my head, I'm like, just, can this night be over so I can just take this off? Because this, this, this ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the feedback. We need a commentary mic just for you. <laughs> we need to put an overhead on you. <laughs> so, long story short, although I still deal with it, I don't deal with it in the sense that I'm not beautiful. Um, it makes me a little uncomfortable still at times because, y'all, I'm still not where he want me to be. Um, <laughs> but we getting there. <laughs> we getting there. Um, but I say that to say to the person who may love the skin that you're already in, it's okay to make some changes as long as it's for the right person long as it, they're, not, they're not trying to change you in a form of manipulation. Um, sometimes it may be your, it may not be a man. In my case, it was my husband. But it may be your friend. And she's like, girl, that's just, you can't go with me looking like that. And if she's not trying to be mean, she's being real with you. She's your friend. And you may not have to be everything that she is or do it the way she's doing it. But as Marsha said, start slowly. Y'all, I ain't like lashes. But they my friend now. I, I got to get my lashes done every two weeks. Every two weeks. I am there. I would not miss an appointment, okay? Sure I didn't get my eyebrows arched till I was in 12th grade. But we got to get them arched. We can't walk around with bushy eyebrows. So sure with enough. time, yeah. with time, the change will come and you will settle in. Just make sure you're not doing it for the wrong reasons. Okay? Um... One of the things that you said, you was talking about, you know, so a man thinketh, so is he. The Bible also talks about it's not what you put into your body that defiles a man, but what comes out that defiles you. So 
the tongue is powerful. So when you start saying things such as I'm not beautiful and you start speaking, it's one thing to think it. But when you start speaking it, you are manifesting that thing in the spiritual realm and you become exactly what you say. Not because it's truly what you are, but as you're saying it, that is what you begin to reflect to yourself in the mirror. Although people around you may see differently, you reflect in the mirror differently for yourself because of what you're speaking. So keep that in mind. You are beautiful. Those affirmations people are talking about, it works because the tongue is powerful. So as you begin to speak those affirmations, you have what you say. Amen. 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 What's the next question? Okay. I'm going to get this question to you since she just came back. Okay. Go ahead and get it to me. Okay. Like I. For men both young and old, status can be everything. With it comes the respect of their peers and commands the attention of women. Without it, feelings of inadequacy can occur, damaging their self-esteem. What would be your advice to a young man who feel his worth is in his status? So there's two answers to this question because it's actually a very loaded question. So one, we have to look at how society views this for men. Depending on how deep your pockets are, that's how society views you as a man. If you broke, there's plenty of examples I can give you. I can give you songs and everything else, and I don't think I need to go that far. You got plenty of them. They don't want no scrub. Uh, she ain't messing with no broke, you know, and all that there. You know what I mean? And that's just what it is. So men, they find the value in their pockets because they understand, I could be ugly, I could be fat, I could be no neck, I could be skinny as a toothpick. If my pocket's right, I can get any woman I want. And that's just the reality of it. I got my eight-man corner with my brothers, that's what it is. <laughs> so that's just what it is. Now, to a young man coming up, actually there's three parts to this. And this one hits home with me. I remember when I first graduated culinary school. First job I got, they offered me $8.25 an hour. I got a whole degree behind my name. And the first thing they tell me is, you don't have any experience. Fast forward later, two years afterwards. Got some experience. They offered me $9. You don't have enough experience. By the time I hit year four, things change. That $9 went to 18. That 18 went to 23. And the numbers just kept jumping. That 23 went to 30. So, but what happened every time the numbers went up? My confidence went up. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality of it. That, that walking around like this went to, hey, how you doing? What's your name? You free Friday? I pick you up at 7. <laughs> it went to that. But when I ain't have it, it was, hey, um, hi, how you doing? Uh, what's your name? Well, actually, this way, how you doing? What, what, what's your name? I'm mad about that. Why you had to turn this way? <laughs> but okay. it, it went to that. So I, I say that because, and I know it may not sound good to some people, but we just got to be real because the show is called what? Christ coffee, no cap. That's just what it is. So being that's what it is, you got to understand to a young man coming up, this is what I would tell him. The glitz, the glam, the money, the women, they going to come, young fella. But integrity, character, those are things that will never change. Self-esteem, and then you got to be sexually responsible. And that don't just mean, okay, STDs. That means you don't want to have kid after kid after kid. And then you got to remember something. The woman that you choose to be with, my brother, she will make or break your life. Don't choose because she fine. And because she validates you because you're making money. Because they going to validate you. They going to come because you're making money. The more money you make, the more problems you will get if you make bad decisions. 
It don't have to be more money, more problems. It's more money, more problems because of your decisions. So I would tell that young man, put Christ first. Because anything you do for him will last and he'll always make it up. You neglect yourself for him, he will make it up. You neglect yourself for your ministry and putting time into your ministry, he will make it up to you. So put Christ first. Write those things like the tablets upon your heart. Keep it there. And if you do that, yeah, you life ain't going to be roses. It ain't going to be peachy all the time. That's just what it is. Because it rains even on the unjust. That's just what it is. So with that being said, I would tell that young man, hey, Christ first, then your bag. Well, actually, Christ first, your bag, then your family. Because family, and I, and I got to go there. Because family sometimes, when you're doing well financially, they know you. They own you. And, and even before you get there, you got to understand, it's easier to help others when you get yourself together. Versus when you're trying to get yourself together, but then you're trying to help everybody else. Because all that do is just stretch you out. That's all it does. So I would tell that young man, put your priorities in order and stick with the plan. Love it. You got anything you like to say about that? All right. <laughs> sound like we, see, sound like yeah, we need to start a young man class. We need to start a young man's class. Hey, up here. They need some training. They need some training. Oh, hey, okay. and, and I got and I got somebody on the next panel. Hopefully we can get them in depending on the schedule. I, I, I love to bring a guest in. Oldest oh, Camp. He'll be great for that one. He's in the great. building, you guys. He in the building. He's a celebrity, it y'all. Is, we, we see, are, everybody can it's say a they got a, a family member. Pleasure to see that's you in the celeb. building this morning, and that's just what it is. <laughs> we see your humility over there. That's all right. That's all right. We gonna we gonna represent you. You ain't gotta represent yourself. We we gonna represent you. Otis Kemp is in the house. That's you it, guys, can we get a round of applause? Amen. The Lord has blessed him to put an album out. Go listen to it, y'all. That's right. And he is number 18 on the charts. Or is it Say seven? that again. 14. 14. 14 on the charts. Get us 14. together. That's right. Thank you. Get us together. That's right. That's we are right. speaking number one on the billboards That's this it. morning. That's, That's what it. we speaking. We, we got you as soon as it's over the copyright. We can't play it right now. That's right. <laughs> but uh, That's right. But I'm going to say this too before we go. It is a poor frog that doesn't praise their own pond and the people that come out your pond with you. Come you on a, now. You ain't by yourself. You got toads and frogs and bullfrogs yeah, like that. So why yeah. you acting like you by yourself? Come on. You got to praise the pond. Cuz, keep going. That's it. Self-esteem also comes from us lifting each other up. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Especially as family. In our culture, and I got to say this, in our culture, we are the biggest offenders of crab mentality. That's right. We cool with our cousin until our cousin pass us. We cool with our sister till our sister pass us. Because we automatically think, oh, you forgot about me because they changed their language, they changed their way. No, they grew. They're growing. And if you take the time to sit in their presence, you can grow with them. So, as he's in the building, we appreciate you. We are proud of you. We're happy. Keep going. Because who knows? It may not be one of us. It may be our daughter who get up under him and he mentor. It may be your son. It may be your niece, your nephew. You don't know. Don't pull him down because you're not where you want to be. If you don't like it, change it. You got the same 24 hours a day that he got. That's, That's right. That's just what it is. Same 24. Stop excuses. That's what they are. They may be actually happening, but you can choose how to respond. The Bible tells us the same thing. It's up to us. We have, we choose life or death. Same thing, same thing is with your life. It's up to you. You tired of being fat? Go work out. If you love being fat, then don't don't talk about being fat. Sit at the table with me. That's it. We'll eat some chicken wings That's and it. get a flop and a wing thing, baby. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you're tired of working on that low-paying job, go back to school. Pick up a skill. Get a trade. 
but don't complain about it because I'm going to tell you, I'm one of them people. I'm going to tell you just like I'm saying it up here. If you're not going to fix it, I don't want to hear it. Because exactly. that's, that's my motto. Amen. We're not going to sit and complain. I'm all for you and I will support you. If you want to sit and be underpaid, I'll sit there with you. Okay, hey, that's you. But don't try to bring me down. We go somewhere and I want to eat fancy. Don't get mad at me because I want to eat fancy. You chose to sit there. I'm going to sit there with you. And I might even buy you a fancy meal, but we ain't going to buy I ain't buying all the fancy meals. We're not doing that. But if you want to go higher, and, you know, you want to go higher, you want to go back to school, you need some help, I'll I help you. I'll help you study. I, I, I ain't going to say that on camera. But um, i help you study. You know, I'll help you get there. But do something about it. Don't just complain. And that, that's, that's a big thing in our culture. We always say, oh, but my mama, oh, but my sister, they said, she said, he said, the teacher said, yeah, but now you are in control of your future. No one else is in control. You are. Speak and do what you want. And I want to say this right here uh, in the words of somebody that I know. I'm going to say this before I land. Now, I want to get to why everyone chose what they chose on their shirts, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start off with me so on my shirt i chose to use something that everyone knows keep calm and then they always add something else on it so i chose keep calm and be yourself so as crazy as this may sound so many people just don't know how to be they self they copy everything that they see whether it be on social media whether it be in the tvs look at the kids when they watch their favorite movies or the action movies or whatever it is, what you see the little kid, Timmy run around with a, with a, with a towel around his yes. neck thinking he's Superman. Yes. He about to tear up his whole ankle jumping off the roof. And we don't understand perception, self-love, self-care, those things, they all run parallel just about. So I chose what I chose on my shirt because at one point in my life, it was hard for me just to be myself. It was hard for me just to accept. I'm the skinniest one out of all of my brothers. I got the lightest voice out of all of my brothers. All of their voices heavier than mine. I had to learn to accept that. I had to learn to accept. I I just probably won't ever sing as good as my brothers. But God dog, I can play all of my instruments. That's right. I play everything. I cook. That's right. I know all kind of tech. He can cook. Yep. And I had to learn to accept. You know what? God built me different. He built me to withstand what well, most people couldn't stand certain tests. I could stand those tests. And that's just what it is. And I had to accept that in me. And once I accepted that in me, life got better. It was great. You know why? Because it's so easy for me to be me versus me trying to be. And everybody else. It was very easy. So I'm going to just go ahead and run it around. Go ahead, kitty cat. <laughs> I chose moving forward because it was the hardest thing for me. I did not let stuff go easily. I will hold you like I hostage, like I had a reason to. And I used to hold myself. But when I got the revelation to move forward, let it go, love you, God forgave you, so who don't forgive you, it don't matter, it was the best thing I did for me. So you have to move forward with accepting who you are. The skin that God put you in, like Ronaldo said, you have to accept who you are, that you're not going to always fit in, that you're not going to always be the prettiest, or you're not going to always be the smartest. But if you can accept who you are, you can sit at the table with anybody. Beautiful. Very good. Go ahead, Buttercup. Oh, okay. I, I have three words on here, but I'm just going to go with the first one. I'm so thankful. When I look back on my life and see where I came from, I'm just so thankful. And a lot of times, even when I'm in prayer, I'm constantly pray I'm constantly crying because I remember where I was. I remember I was in a dark, dark, dark place. But I'm no longer in that place anymore. I am so thankful. Go ahead, Jack. I chose exceptional because I want I want the young, the youth, 
to look at themselves and say, I am exceptional. And see yourself that way. Start to do. To see yourself that way and to not actually act on it is pointless. So see yourself, I'm exceptional. And you start to build from there. That's why I choose exceptional. All right. Go ahead, sweetheart. All righty. I chose confidence. Not confidence, but confidence. And I chose that because your identity starts with Christ. I didn't realize that as a young lady, <clears throat> but your identity starts with Christ. Before you were born, he had already spoken into existence who you were. He calls us the apple of his eye. He says we are above and not beneath. We're, you know, the head and not the tail. God has already told us who we are. But because we live in the world, we're not supposed to be of the world, but we live in the world. The enemy tries to tell you who you are by the things that you see, the people you're around. Um, the things that come through social media. He tries to get us to imitate everything and everyone else except for who he's already told you you are. And that comes from the enemy trying to tell you who, we are and if, who you are. And as he's trying to tell you that, he's telling you lies. He's sowing, you know, lies and deceit to you. You know, you're not beautiful, you're this, or I'm not smart. And while he's doing that, he's hoping that you buy into it because as you buy into it, He's trying to steal the identity that Christ has given you. So as a young person, if you don't know Christ for the saving of your soul, and if you have not opened your Bible, start there. You may not decide today that you want to surrender wholeheartedly to Christ. I didn't start there despite being in church all my life. I didn't start there. But I started in the word of God. And as I just started reading, the change came. The de my desires change. My tastes change. As I began to see what God was saying and what he was offering me, it was far better than what the world could offer me any given day. I would tell you as a Christian, being saved or unsaved, you are going to go through things. Don't let the enemy tell you that when I get saved, I'm going through worse things than this and this is because I'm serving Christ. No, that's what the enemy wants you to believe. That's another form of deception. The Bible tells us that, you know, he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So you're going to go through whether you serve God or not. That's because you are born of this world. But I can tell you serving Christ gives you something Satan can't. And that's hope. Yes. And when I started reading my word, I got hope. And with hope came confidence. That when I had issues, if I didn't understand anything, that I could always go back to God. I just said that earlier. I didn't understand why my husband wanted me to wear makeup. And I couldn't understand what other people were trying to tell me. But in prayer, God satisfied my heart. He made it okay to make the transition. And that's because God know how to go where people can't. So if at the end of the day, whether you be young, whether you be a young adult, and this can even go for older adults or we say seasoned yes. whatever the situation whatever may be trying to attack your confidence or your self esteem if you can't put it in the hands of a trusted friend or a trusted loved one as my mama said you can always put it in the hand of God and he will not tell your secret I don't know if you want to close out because this yeah. does conclude our panel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close out. Did you all enjoy this? Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. This was amazing. Next time, we got to put you a mic just over there. <laughs> I know that's you need right. one over there. And, and anybody online, we thank you for watching. We thank you for sharing with us today. You know, and many more to come. Our next panel is next month on the 2nd. So look for that. April 2nd will be our next panel, okay? Different subject, different set of panelists, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and end on the word of God, okay? We're going to go ahead in prayer and dismiss. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together today, God. First, before we go any further, we thank you for waking us up this morning. 
in our right mind with life, health, and strength, God. We thank you for the use and activities of our limbs. We thank you for the fact that we are clothed in our right mind and just being able to get up out of our bed by our own strength, God. We do not take that for granted, God. And God, as we get ready to leave this place but never out of your presence, we ask you for those who are on their way to wherever they may be going, their various places, God. We ask you to shield them and help them get there safe and sound, God. And for anybody that's on the way for our 11 o'clock service, God, we ask you to bring them here safely, God, with no accidents, no tickets, no thefts, thieves or robbers or intruders, God. Keep them awake and alert as they get here, God. And we just give you all the glory and all the honor that is due unto your name, God. And we thank you for this successful first panel today, God, with Christ, coffee, and no cap, God. And we just thank you and we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory right now. In your mighty name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Amen.